Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here in the forum of the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries for our next uh, panel discussion, I could really say, because we have a lot of people here on stage. It's about megawatt class fuel cells in industry. Why powering your business with fuel cell energy solutions? And I would like uh, to point out right now that at uh, 2 o'clock we will all go to the Exhibitors Lounge uh, um, for a, um, a press conference uh, if you want to discuss it a little bit uh, deeper you can do that there over in the exhibitors launch we have preserved that there because time is very short but uh, we would like uh, to give you an appetizer of this question megawatt class fuel cells and in industry why powering your business with fuel cell energy solutions uh, I would like to introduce to my uh, partners here on stage. Uh, Chip Botona is sitting right uh, opposite from me. He's president and CEO of Fuel Cell Energy Solutions GmbH. Uh, right next to him is Klaus Wolf. He is CEO of uh, Freatech AG. And uh, Michael Schäfer, who's sitting there, is the head of production engineering at Freatech AG. And right next to me is uh, the senior organiza organization manager from E.ON Connecting Energies, Christoph Hiesken. Good to have you here. And if you have a question right now or during my, uh, my talk with these uh, four gentlemen, just raise your hand. I'll be with the microphone right with you. So, um, Mr. Batona, my first question goes to you. Uh, Germany has never produced so much renewable energy than today. And it also never has produced so much CO2. There is a gap in between it. There must be a paradox, isn't it? You can tell us from the outside what's going wrong with Germany. <laughs> well, I don't think it's just Germany, Mr. Walter. I think it's a challenge for the entire world. I mean, we're, we're seeing a change in terms of more inter intermittent power, which is good. It's renewable, both wind and solar, um, as well as some challenges with more baseload power. So we think that this idea of implementing distributed generation, which is megawatt scale at a, at a price point that's affordable, with the aspect of high efficiency, which lowers the CO2 and provides secure power is one of the solutions. There's one energy source, even in Germany and all of Europe, we don't use really, which is efficiency, you know? Right. That's why to use uh, fuel cells, isn't it? Yeah, the, the higher the efficiency, the lower the CO2 emissions you might have. So really, um, we have virtually no pollutants with fuel cells, as everybody knows, but the highest efficiency yields the highest results in terms of CO2 reduction. Uh, what we need is decentralized power generation, obviously, with fuel cell, and we have to know this is state of the art and all over the world, isn't it? That's right. We're, we're seeing this come up in just really anywhere in Asia, different parts of Europe beyond Germany, mm -hmm. as well as North America as well, where people want to put power either on their site. Uh, we see it when you, when you get into large fuel cells, the, the cost per kilowatt comes down, you start to have a significant amount of megawatts, which impacts the actual CO2 reduction. And what they really turn into is a financial instrument where we see people like the utility company or financial institutions actually investing in these assets and letting people like Freatech here do what they do best, which is manufacture a product or something like that. Mr. Hiskin, Aeon Connecting Energies is an integrator for sustainable decentralized energy solutions for customers throughout the world. Uh, why is Aeon interested in decentralized power. I think you have big power plants and you want to run them as long as possible. Yes, for sure, but to be honest, E.ON is not new in the decentralized energy business because we run it over 25 years and we have installed capacities above 1.6 gigawatt installed electricity capacity in the market. And to be honest, we as E.ON Connecting Energies are really interested in new solutions in uh, technical technological agnostic solutions and going on with the market looking what is feasible how can uh, intelligent solutions be integrated on industrial sites for our customers and how can it be yes a higher value because as you all know from the press um, the large power plants will be under more and more pressure and now we are turning from a more centralized to a decentralized energy provider and so we offer solutions so you heard to the our signs of the time yes sir. yes yes <laughs> eon very early and we are erecting on it and yeah. we can uh, spread these projects across europe and globally and so we are looking for new solutions okay Mr. Wolf, uh, you are CEO of Freatech AG. Uh, Freatech is a specialist company for products made of non-corroding and wear-resistant materials. Actually, you're doing components for fuel cells. Is that very energy consuming? 
Yes, we are producer of uh, ceramic and plastics and we are partner since 2001 for dielectrics, a main part in the fuel cell. And I visited first time 2001 uh, fuel cell in Connecticut, uh, a company and I see running till 13 years this fuel cell very, very well. And uh, we ourselves, it's a dream for me six, seven years ago to have a fuel cell because we need gas, we need electricity and uh, we belong to a big uh, concern which is called Aljaxis, a Belgium concern, 15,000 people and one of our aim is to reduce the energy consumption for our products, for plastic, electricity, but also for ceramic uh, gas. And there's a fuel cell, the right thing for us to help to reduce the pollution. But I think Michael is a guy who can go deeper in these details. But, but how did it work? So, so you had the idea to have your own power plant, to have your own fuel cell power plant, and then you go to Mr. Heeskin and say, please consult us? Mm, or what was the way? <laughs> not, not really. We are a company. We invest much, much money in, in, uh, in uh, uh, machines, in ovens, in furnaces. And uh, this is an investment uh, which we go direct in the products. And uh, we have high energy consumption because we center our parts at 1,800 degrees C high gas, and, but also electricity, the machines get uh, bigger, newer, and we renew our machine park very often, three, four, five years, uh, to get less consumption energy, but it's really big and uh, uh, we, we need green energy for our products because the product should be more and more environmental uh, 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 protect, protection. And, and Mr. Bodono, what you install in there is a one megawatt power plant, which is quite big, and the first one in Europe, isn't it? That's right, it's, uh, it's actually above a megawatt. It will be the first in Europe. Um, we've installed plants that are this size, 15 megawatts, up to 60 megawatt plants around the world. Uh, and people are starting to appreciate the fact that the bigger the plant is, the lower the cost, the more CO2 you can reduce. So for example, in this particular plant, because of the application, as Mr. Wolf said, they use a lot of heat, they use a lot of electricity. So if you look at the electrical efficiency at about 47%, and combine it with the heat use that they could offset from a boiler, you're talking about efficiency levels, total efficiency, it's over 80%. So again, back to this idea of if you can't have zero carbon, how do you best reduce carbon at the same time meeting the business needs that these folks have? And um, we're talking about your fuel cell, which is a molten cabinet fuel cell. Uh, this has special uh, possibilities. It can be fed with any kind of gas, actually. With natural gas, with biogas, uh, any other kind also? That's correct. It can be just clean natural gas. Um, we can do biogas from wastewater treatment plants, Landfill landfills, gas. and yeah. other you know, type of gases as long as you have a certain amount of methane. Mr. Schaefer, um, you will use probably natural gas. Is that natural correct? Gas. Okay. Yes. Um, as Mr. Botona already pointed out, a fuel cell, especially a carbonate fuel cell, produces heat. Do you also need the heat of yes. that fuel cell? Yeah. Yes, we need the heat all over the year. We need a 700 kilowatt um, power, uh -huh. and we can use it for um, production process. And also the electricity you also need? Also, okay. all over the year, 8,000 hours per year. What, what efficiency are we talking about? You said 80% all together, heat and, uh, right. and electricity. Overall efficiency. But, but yeah. most important is the electricity uh, efficiency. How high is, is, uh, is the, it? With the your electrical fuel portion is about 47%. Okay, pretty good indeed. Yeah. That, that is better than, than your power plants can do in, A in from bit, the end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are the normal, uh, when we talk about normal power plants, what, what range do they have and efficiency? Uh, it, it depends on the um, type of power plant. It's between 40 up to 60% in total efficiency, not electrical efficiency. So a modern gas plant, for example, can deliver up to 60% with a gas turbine, but it's only feasible with large centralized stations. Okay, yes. yeah, but, but yes. if you only talk uh, about the electric efficiency, yes. I think Usually not more than 35, 38 percent. 35, up to 40 percent. Okay, yes. the newest ones. But then you have the losses in distribution and so on, of right. course. So. Yes. so this is pretty good, actually. So right, yes. the high efficiency uh, makes it uh, really uh, worthwhile yeah, to do it. Um, Mr. Wolf, how important was the ecological aspect for you, for your decision to implement a fuel yes. cell? For us, the uh, electrological in, uh, effect is very high because uh, uh, one thing you say is the losses in the, in the, in the field. Uh, we get much more power out of the uh, uh, 
uh, fuel cell on site. We have no long distance between production of energy and uh, use of energy. We have the steam. Today we have a steam block, an uh, old version, which is not so efficient. Uh, 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 and very important is to get, uh, besides the environmental aspect, also uh, aspect to reduce cost. And cost uh, in Europe is very high. We are under high pressure in Germany. You know, electricity all over Europe is cheaper than in, uh, in Germany. We use much gas, much electricity. It's a big amount of our product uh, for extruders, for injection molding, but also for the furnaces in ceramic. So we need uh, cheaper electricity in our site too. But still you have to pay taxes on it, don't you? Yes, we have to pay taxes, <laughs> much taxes. They're still <laughs> arguing yeah. about that, yes, uh, if you have yeah. to, but even on, on uh, power yeah. you yourself but are producing, you have to pay yeah. taxes But, but also look, uh, uh, we have some shutdowns uh, which are natural, and I think what, what Michael will explain, uh, the shutdowns are also very important for us. Last week we have a shutdown, and when an, inject in, an, an injection molding machine shut down, we have to take the tools out, take everything out. Uh, the ovens uh, are closed down when we are near 1,800 degree to produce dielectrics, and the, the gas is closed because electricity closed the valves very quick. Then uh, the parts are destroyed, and we can start from, from scrap. It is important to have also uh, electricity as an as a emergency on our side. That's correct, yes. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, it's also quite important uh, that with a fuel cell you have almost no emissions on site. You can't afford any emissions on site. You have workers there on, on site. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was, an, was one of the reasons why you decided yes. to have a fuel cell. What about noise and, and, and vibration? We don't have noise or vibration with the fuel cell. It's very important. So, Mr. Matona, it's, it's not all new. It's, it's new in Germany and it's new in, in, in Europe in that scale, in one megawatt scale. Right. But uh, um, tell us a little bit about uh, worldwide uh, installation of this technology. How many, well, megawatts have you installed yet already? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, most of the activity to date has been in North America and in Asia. Um, and, and that has to do perhaps a little bit with policy and some of the, some of the regulations there, but um, the fuel cells themselves, we have over two billion kilowatt hours of operating hours, so it's not about the technology anymore, at least not, not our technology. Uh, like I said, it's really about, the, it's, it's a financial asset that provides efficiency, it needs to be affordable and security, as Mr. Wolf said, in the event that you have other outages. So I think it's just a question of the time is now for, for Europe, um, if, if there's been a lot of change um, in policy, uh, different elections and things, on top of the fact that there are some challenges, and we think that the fuel cells that we make, the large scale ones, the timing is right. And so we've been spent a lot of time, we have our own company here now, and we have uh, friends like this that see the value, and I'm very excited about the opportunity, even though maybe Europe was slow to begin, I'm very excited about the, the near term um, you know, opportunities there are here. Mr. So Tony, if I, if I look around here on the group exhibit, I see a lot of companies who are more or less reliant on funding, on, on demonstration programs, uh, whatsoever, research programs. What about you? You wouldn't say no to funding, but uh, could you live on without funding? Yeah, so um, I have to be careful what I say. I have uh, different people in the room here, but um, our, our, vision, the word. our, our vision, we, so we've reduced the cost of the product 70%, okay, over the last several years. And I publicly said that we see another 30% reduction. When we hit that goal, and it only takes us about 200 megawatts to produce on an annual basis to hit that goal, and we have about 300 megawatts either installed in our current backlog today, okay, we'll be able to have a lower cost product, which means a lower price product. All of the financial expectations of the different investors will be met, and we won't need any incentives at all. But there's obviously a, a roadmap here to do that. So we, our particular roadmap is continue to focus on cost reductions, which we'll pass on to the marketplace, continue to focus on improvements in efficiency, okay, and then continue to utilize the molten carbon technology, which is what we use, to derive more things. So for example, we mentioned in our, when we were talking earlier, one of the things we do also is we can actually produce, uh, we obviously produce electricity, heat energy, steam, hot water, um, but we also could produce hydrogen. As a byproduct. As a byproduct mm -hmm. from this molten carbon technology, which further leverages the technology platform 
which gives us more revenue, which makes those returns even better. Um, costs are, you said that, Mr. Wolf, cost was, was an important argument for you, uh, but it is not the cheapest solution you could imagine, but it's still good for you. Yes, it's not, not, it's not the cheapest solution, but uh, we also, I know from the solar fields in the beginning, the energy is more high. I think in, in uh, five, six, seven years, we're on a stage that it go down. And when we are one of the first, I think we will also participate in the evolution and come to a step where much cheaper than the today's energies are. Since you've installed it uh, already and, and it's, it's ready to go, um, you can tell me how much, is the, how, how much was a kilowatt then, if you include everything, like transport of the fuel cell, installation, uh, all the surroundings, how much is a kilowatt now? So th this particular project we're talking about here is, isn't yeah. actually installed yet, we're just all right. doing the details. Yeah, but okay. to give you some idea, yeah. um, the fuel cell, I mean, and this is all in, that's in, in the thing I want to make sure that we understand is, this is a turnkey project, right. okay? It involves integrating into the, the steam system, et cetera, et cetera. But roughly speaking today, it's about, I think around 5,000, sorry, 3,500 euros per kilowatt. Now that's for today's project, you know, we're learning some things as well, but I would expect that number to continue to drive down more towards like 2,500 or something like that. That was my next question. Yeah, yeah. Your aim is 2,500. Right. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good, actually. Um, there's more to come, uh, Mr. Matona. Where are your potential visit, uh, your potential uh, customers in Europe? Well, Can obviously you here in Germany, obviously, yeah. but um, beyond Germany, there's interesting markets in the UK, Italy, uh, some opportunities in Russia, and some other places like that. So, we're seeing more and more interest as as people can understand the value, and and obviously the financial returns they can get from these instruments. Having people like the utilities companies involved, that's happening on a worldwide level. Many of the owners of these plants today that we have in, in the US and, in, and in, uh, in Asia are in fact the utility companies looking for another way to do power generation, um, you know, given the fact that it's changed from central generation of years past. Very good. We run out of time, unfortunately, but I would like to invite you all to come with us to uh, the Exhibitor Lounge just over there for the press conference about that topic. I would like to thank you all for this interesting discussion here on stage. I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.